Hello, hello, welcome back to Bite Size Dentistry. I'm Dr. Shrey and I hope you're having an awesome day. Has it ever happened to you that you spend 30 minutes on a root canal, your files are going to the apex, but your GP is just short. It's just not going to the apex. So today, I'm going to be talking to you about five reasons why your GP is not going to the apex. Let's get started. Number one, debris. Now, when we're cutting dentine with nighttime, it's kind of like similar to cutting wood with its saw. Right? It generates a huge amount of sawdust or what we call debris. Now, the coronal third is the one that generates the maximal amount of dentine. And it is really important that we maintain that dentine outside of the canal rather than letting it come back within the canal. So what you need to be doing is adopting a crown down procedure for it as well as frequent irrigation as well as making sure that you clean your file before you enter the next time so that the file is removing the dentine rather than depositing the dentine. Now this debris doesn't just block your GP, it also gives the bacteria a lovely environment to grow and to meet you the next time during a flare-up. One thing that works really effectively is to use an oxidizing agent mixed with EDTA. So you put EDTA on a cone or on a file and you take it into the canal and as the oxidizing agent touches the EDTA, EDTA as well as the organic tissue, it forms bubbles. These bubbles in the form of effervescence latch onto the debris and help carry it up and out of the canal. This is known as the elevator effect. Another major reason why your GP doesn't go to the apex is man-made obstructions such as ledges. Now we're going to be addressing ledges in much more detail in a subsequent video, but I have a very interesting tip for you. What you can do is pre-curve your GP once you have managed to negotiate the ledge, which we'll discuss in a separate video, like I said. What you can do is step one, dip your GP in spirit. Number two, while it is wet, pre-curve it slightly, tilt in the direction that you'd want. And step three, let it dry out or air dry it. Once that's done, you will see that the GP maintains its curved position and is much more firm than it was in its original situation. You're welcome. Number three, using old or worn out files. Now how it works is, there are segments in a file that will get worn out more than other segments. These areas are actually performing inefficient cutting. Now inefficient cutting means that it leaves behind small islands or little islands in dentine on the walls. And if the file is not cutting the dentine, then it is burnishing the dentine, which leads to an area that instead of being wider than before, it is narrower than before. And that leads to the GP getting stuck. This can also be called as taper lock. Number four, the concept of working too fast and too furious. Now the logic is the same as it was with the old worn out files. If you have not given enough passes with the file, then there will be areas that are left behind on the walls. Now files are fluted, right? and they are metallic and they have a little bit of springiness. So they manage to negotiate these islands that you've left behind in the wall. But the GP is a solid cone and hence it gets locked and is not able to go to the apex. The solution for both the problems is almost the same. What you need to do is use an etch file that is one size smaller than your master bicycle file in every situation and perform a good amount of etch filing in order to generate these glassy smooth walls. After you've done that etch filing, you need to irrigate out and that is the way where you can move forward and have your GP fitting snugly till the apex without any obstructions on its walls. Number five, the non-lubricated master cone. Now, so far, all the things that we've discussed were actually flaws in BMP as well as the files and other things like that. But think about this, after you have cleaned and shaped and you use a paper point to dry the canal, you're using a dry GP inside a dry canal and that basically generates way too much friction. So what you want to do is coat that master cone with a small amount of EDTA so that it is lubricated and can comfortably go to the apex. As a bonus tip, what you can do is introduce one drop of hypochlorite along with this process so that you have that last little bit of effervescence to perform effective cleaning and shaping. So in conclusion, we've discussed five interesting concepts. Number one, how irrigating between file changes reduces the amount of debris and how the coronal third is the one that you need to be really careful about because it generates the vast bulk of the debris. Number two, spirit can be used to coat your cone, pre-curve it, and when it dries, that cone maintains its shape, and that's how you pre-curve cut a percha. Number three, old files don't cut, they burnish. So they don't widen, they narrow the canal. So make sure that you're checking the age of your files before using them. Number four, edge filing helps remove dentinal islands and it separates the pros from the amateurs. It's something that you absolutely must be doing before your master apical file. And number five, lubricate your master cone. That is why your master cone is not going to the apex. 
Thank you so much for making it here and spending some time on Bite Size Dentistry. I hope you guys are having as much fun listening to these videos as I am having making them. Don't forget to be awesome.